The political wind shifted dramatically after the midterm elections. President Obama and the Democrats found themselves out in the cold, while Sarah Palin and the Tea Party brought the red states to a rolling boil. Most of the election debate was over hot button issues like taxes, spending, and health care. But sometimes substance can be overshadowed by a symbol, like Ground Zero, nearly 10 years after the attacks on 9 11. Let's take a walk to Ground Zero. Sure. He is the man behind one of the biggest controversies of the year, the developer of the so-called Ground Zero Mosque. And yet few people even know his name. He's Sharif El Gamal, and his story may surprise you. When people hear the name Sharif El Gamal, what do you think comes to their mind? What image? I don't know if people know that I was born in Brooklyn, in Methodist Hospital. Um, and I'm an American. You think they're expecting to see something akin to one of the radical clerics that we have seen pictures of throughout the years? That's what it's felt like for the last eight months. It is a political act to create this facility close to ground zero. For the last eight months, El Gamal has found himself in the middle of a firestorm. His plans to build an Islamic community center on the outskirts of the World Trade Center site led to a national uproar. It's a hate book, bro. You're, you're it says to anything. kill. But this is what Sharif El Gamal wants you to know about him. He's an American born to a Polish Catholic mother and an Egyptian father. He is a Muslim and a proud New Yorker. On 9-11, he says he rushed to the World Trade Center and spent 24 hours handing out water to rescue workers. After 9-11, he rediscovered his faith. You said that you felt as if on September 11th, your religion was hijacked. I look upon it as if, if somebody took my wallet and committed identity theft. And that's what the extremists have done. In 2002, he attended a sermon by Imam Faisal Abdul Raouf who has led a small mosque in Lower Manhattan for more than three decades. I remember going up to him by his third sermon and saying, Imam, it's not fair that 70 people get to listen to this message. Together, they came up with the idea of a community center to cater to the growing population of Muslims in Lower Manhattan. After scouting dozens of properties, El Gamal, an experienced real estate developer, settled on this one, a former Burlington coat factory which he bought last year for $4.5 million. It took us four years to acquire this real estate. The building was abandoned on 9-11 when in an odd twist of fate, a piece of landing gear from one of the hijacked planes crashed through its roof. We now know it as the Ground Zero Mosque, which is a bit of a misnomer because it's not at Ground Zero, but two and a half blocks away. And technically, it's not a mosque. It is going to be a community center to cater to the largest growing residential community in New York State today. But it is a place that, that Muslims will come to pray if it's completed. This will be Absolutely. a center for prayer. Uh, well, there's going to be a prayer component. In fact, what many people don't know is that the prayer center already exists. This building is located two blocks from the site of the most horrific attack on American soil in anyone's memory. And you say that when you first envisioned this project, it never crossed your mind that there would be controversy over that. Not once have I held my faith accountable for the horrific events of 9-11. I am an American. I am an American who has a specific belief system. In order to be a Muslim, you have to be a good Jew and a good Christian. And you do not commit a, a, a mass murder. The preliminary design for the community center shows a gleaming 16-story tower. El Gamal estimates it will cost more than $120 million to build. And it was reported this week he'd like a portion of that to come from federal funds meant to revitalize Lower Manhattan. None of the money he raises, he says, will come from groups with un-American values. Sharif, if we sit here on Thanksgiving three or four years from now, will you still be here? Will this project still be on track? 
Matt, it's not in my DNA to give up or to quit. The whole world is watching what we are doing right now.